start painting. We've got the chassis primed, and it's not just been primed with a, a filler primer. We've put an etching primer on here first so it'll stick to the bare metal. Then I did body work on it. Um, in these areas that we see, especially in the front of the car, I like to clean up the welds and do some body work. So we did the body work here. And you can see this is a clean weld, and there'll be a cover that goes over that. You don't have to sand and, and you know fill your welds, but at least on the front of the cars that we do as a turnkey, we do that, it just looks better. Now that I've got my primer on, a filler primer, I need to sand it, and I'm going to start, you can do with the DA, this is a, a dual action sander, and now you can't pick it up with the uh, the camera, but I'm I'm not a 400 scratches, and 400 is really the the minimum you want to go to. 600 would probably be better, and there's multiple ways to do this. This is a DA a wet sanding or dry sanding, I mean. And when I sand through a little bit on the corner, that's fine. Now, if I go a big spot and sand all my etching primer off of there, I need to deal with putting an etching sealer back on it. The DA doesn't work very well in the corners. I mean, you just can't get in there and make it smooth. So you have to sand, hand sand that. So again, I've got 400. Now in hand sanding, there's several ways to do it. I'm dry sanding now and it clogs up the uh, paper really quickly. You can take a blower and keep blowing your paper off and get a longer life out of your paper, but another way to do it is wet sanding. And this is a wet sanding paper. It'll, it'll say on here, I believe, wet, and, wet or dry. A lot of them say that way. So this paper is made to sand either dry or wet. So when we wet sand, the water we use is really just a lubricant to help sand. And we can sand the whole car like this, and it would be just fine. We could dry sand the car with the DA, especially on the flat open spots, it's a little bit quicker. We could dry sand around the corners if that's what you'd want to do. Personally, I like the wet sand. So we'll dry sand the big areas, I'll wet sand it all, and I'm going to get this to 600, and then we're going to be ready to paint it. I'm going to look at it at that point, and I'm going to determine whether I want to use a sealer or not. It's not necessary to use a sealer, and unless I've got too many areas that I'm seeing through into the metal, I'm just going to go ahead and put the base coat on here. So I'll get it prepped and we'll be back in a few minutes and just start painting. Okay, we've got it prepped. I chose to wet sand it with the 600. Now really the difference between a, a professional and an amateur is professional gets paid. I've seen some really nice paint jobs come out of garages at home or even not painting in the driveway. Um, Kind of the key to making money at it though is knowing the shortcuts. And a shortcut isn't cutting uh, a necessary process, it's just getting something done quicker. And why I did 600 wet sand, there's a lot of curves here. The wet sand paper is flexible and I was able to get in everything. I've got it looking pretty good. I, some of these black areas you see here, that's just a DP sealer, it's a DP90 on there. Um, the key to a good paint job that's going to last for a long time, a lifetime really is the preparation before the paint. We've got the bare metal, we've got a, an etching primer that's sticking on that bare metal, we've got a primer on top of that that's it's an activated primer, that a surfacer that we can sand the scratches out of. Now this is looking good and it's a solid color so I'm not going to use a sealer. If it was a, say a light silver or a light blue metallic, something like that, I would want to put a sealer on here that would have this all one color so that I wouldn't see the differences not when I put my uh, base coat on, I would have a good um, even covering of, of that silver or that blue. But in a, in a red base coat, um, solid color, this would be fine. So now it's time to just start painting. Um, depending on the product that you use and the, even in, in your technique, there's going to be different rules for different materials. So there's no one standard size fits all. There's, there is a, a 70 degree rule. 
Uh, most of the paints are based on 70 degrees. So if they give you a dry time, that's based on 70 degrees. When I put this base on here, there's going to be a flash time before I should put the next one on. And uh, what that flash time does is it allows the solvents to evaporate out of the, uh, the pigments and everything so that you're not, we don't want the solvents in there. The solvent is only there for the purpose of getting the pigment onto the material, onto the, uh, the frame here. So if it's 60 degrees, for every 10 degree difference, if you're going colder, it will take twice as long to dry. Now if it's 80 degrees, it will take half the time to dry. And if it's 90 degrees, even more. And again, the different paint materials have different uh, reducers to compensate for that. So temperature is a big difference today where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the cool side, but I'm in the painting range. You cannot paint if it's under 55 degrees. That's just, the materials just don't work. And uh, different manufacturers will tell you little different things there. A lot of it is just experience. What makes a good painter is figuring out your problems quickly and dealing with it chemically sometimes. A good paint gun is very important. Um, without a good paint gun, you just can't lay out a good, good paint job. So preparation, know your materials, know the flash times, know what your base is gonna be and where you wanna go and how to finish it with a, a good clear. And then uh, the materials are really easy to use nowadays. It's not like they were just several years ago. Um, even the home guy can get a, get a good paint job. So ask the person that you're buying the materials from if you have any questions and they should be able to help you. And if they won't, find a paint store that does help you and answer questions. And don't be afraid of it. We're, uh, we're getting ready to paint this one. I'm going to paint it red, then we're going to clear it. And then we're going to go ahead and wet sand it and buff it. you got a lot of, a lot of freedom. You can sand any dust you may get out of it. If you, you know, get some dust in your paint job, you can sand that out and clear it. So it's time to put, put paint on here and, and then move on to the next part of the project, which is uh, assembling it and see the real car. Well, proper ventilation is a good thing. I'm going to wear a mask when I do this. We're just going to paint it now, and uh, the next time you see this frame, we're going to be putting parts on it.